Hey there friends, welcome back. Uh, today we have an SLJ1 Techniques. Uh, this is a linear turntable, a very, very small footprint. In fact, the uh, footprint of it is the size of a uh, jacket, um, a record jacket. Anyway, so uh, this is a time period when Techniques and Sansui and everybody else, I tap this because this is a Sansui, uh, we're trying to cut costs. They're trying to um, mass market. You know, they're they're not. Uh, this isn't like the upscale model. This was this is meant for kind of an entry level. With that being said, it is built very very well, and it has stood the test of time. And there's a lot of these out there. Uh, if you go out to eBay, you can find them for as low as fifty bucks. I think you might have to do a little work on one like that, uh, and as high as two hundred. So. Uh, pretty broad range there. You know, 100 is a pretty sweet spot. This one does have wear and tear, like on the corners. Uh, over here, there's a chip, and there's some age scarring in here. Uh, but overall, it's in really good shape. It's not um, it's, it's not a garage unit, but it's definitely not a showpiece. So uh, the way that this linear works is you just hit play after you close it, and it goes and finds the first song and drops the needle and goes into play which it should be doing here in just a second a second now there we go all right now let's say i don't like that song if i just hit this skip button here or maybe i yeah no i don't need to hold it what it's going to do is it's going to move this back the light sensor optics is going to find the first clear and then it's going to find the next uh, song and drop down on it now it seems like it there is an adjustment knob in the back up here when you lift the table or when you lift the lid <laughs> not the table <laughs> i'm tired and uh you can move it just a tad here and there to adjust it in and out so it needs adjusted so it just skipped the song and you can do it again and just takes it a second to think about it and find that last song there and then it's going to find the next one pretty slick little feature there and then it does the repeat has the cueing all the normal stuff that you would expect so there we go sweet this thing works flawlessly i've been um, listening to it for uh, a couple hours now not this song not these songs these songs suck but I don't get dinged on YouTube for them. So the cool thing about linears, though, that I really, really like, and I think you may have seen this on other videos if you watch my other videos, but uh, you can swap. If you're, if you're like, let's say you picked up somebody's record collection, you got 200 records to spin through. You need to move, move, move. Or, you know, you're just really hot on moving through the records. You just drop that, hit play. It's going to find it it's going to play it and then let's say that you get into it and you don't like what's playing you just lift it up and go to town lift pull the record off now uh, the religious record folks among us are going to just tell me that I, I did that wrong and I did so uh, put it in the comments if you still feel like saying that I admit it I did it sorry don't hurt me Okay, so the next part of the video is going to be actually servicing this unit. This one has been 100% serviced, uh, or as serviced as you can get with one of these. Uh, there were no, like, we inspected the soldering in the board, uh, we being me, and I had a mouse in my pocket. And all of that looked great. All of it looked good. Uh, so nothing wrong there. Uh, its behavior is as expected, and the belt was bad. Uh, so when I got it, it was a parts repair. It wasn't moving, uh, wasn't dropping, wasn't doing anything. And that's indicative. Like if there's, if the motor can't move it, it's not going to, it's not going to drop it. All of the switches work correctly. So she's ready to go. She's ready to find a good, good new home. Thanks for watching. And, uh, here we go into the servicing video. Sorry for the noise in the background. My AC is running and I changed rooms. So... For my filming that is so uh as a result you know hey it's a little noisy in here sometimes i'm gonna build a wall eventually i just got done building a bunch of walls i don't want to build any more walls right now so put up with the sound you can deal with it you'll live i promise i may not 
because I'm OCD. All right, here is the SLJ1 and the oh, uh, disassembly for the lid is really super easy on these and really super easy to mess up. So there's these little pegs that are seated in this hole, one hole here and one hole on the other side. And then there's a larger version of those pegs with a little a rubber seal on it on uh, up here on the hinge. Okay, so this is acting as the hinge and this is just acting as a stay. And uh, what happens is when you pull the little peg out, let's do this, let's illustrate this, let's show this. So the little peg, let's pick the right one, come on there. All right, so when it's sitting in there, it's sitting like so, you're gonna pop this one out and just a really tiny little itty bitty uh, flathead screwdriver will get that. You just weasel under it and just ever so slightly come around it, around it, around it. Don't force too hard because that thing will just deteriorate. These things are like 30 years old, so they're prone to cracking and falling apart. And uh, replacements are out there. It's just easier not to wait. So if you do it carefully, you don't have to wait on a replacement. And then these are uh, these will set in there, and you do the same thing. You just very slightly uh, get under there and just nudge up from the corners. Okay, when it comes when you're done with that, the lid just comes right off. Under the lid uh, is all of your assembly for the tone arm, and it's just really, really, really straightforward, easy maintenance on these. Uh, you have the belt over on this side, right here, and you can, on these, get away with a small rubber band. I'm not even joking. It does not uh, affect the speed of the table, so you do want to be really, really super sensitive about what type of belt you put on here but you don't really need to care about this one just as long as it's tight and it's durable it's not going to give in in a year you don't want to um, you know disassemble this 20 times over its life if well even three is probably a little much uh, buy something good but a rubber band will get you by there you go all right to uh clean things up a little bit and i've already done on this one you take a little bit of um, alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol, really weak rubbing alcohol. You probably want to run about a 50-50. So um, if you get like a 90% alcohol mix, cut it with water, about 50%. And then run it along here, clean this rail off really well. And then um, you can take and just roll this by hand. You can see it's moving it. If I just roll it by hand and you'll want to get it about midway clean this other side really well and then use some synthetic lubricant something that's not going to get sticky over time I use uh, gosh I can't even remember what it's called but it's uh, synthetic it's a 100 weight and then you can watch my other videos I actually name it in there uh, and then you want to test this to make sure that the tone arm is actually descending and ascending very controlled so you can see it's actually just jumping here as it should come on there we go uh, and trying to get the video to make sure that I can I, you're actually seeing that so it's coming up and down as it should it's free to move side and side and that's good you're ready to roll at this point and the way to test it and I've already tested this one is uh, to go ahead and leave it centered like so uh, not so, but here about so, and plug it in and turn it on, and it will automatically, if it's running, if it's good to go, it will automatically return to start position. And that is it. Now let's get into the belt. Let's turn this bubby around here. Mat off, plate off, and the plate is fairly straightforward. This one is missing its access port. Don't know why, but it's gone. Not a big deal. Um, there we go. A belt. Seat the belt on here like so. Make sure you're running your fingers nice and slow. Your fingers need to be really clean. It's usually best to just have uh, uh, that alcohol that you just used for the inside. And... Um, <clears throat> dip your fingers in it and wipe them off and make sure there's not a lot of oil on your fingers these belts will slip really bad if they got any oil on them at all uh, and then you want to make sure that there's no creases I was just working a crease out so it should be smooth along it 
once it's smooth let's see here we got a little bit of a hiccup here there's something on the actual belt all right all right so we're smooth all right good to go you just take and hold it with your fingers like so like so and hold the belt out with the other hand and drop it on there drop that on there and now she's seated that is it these things are super super easy to work on if you find one that is broken but it does power on and maybe you can confirm that you can hear that motor running and the platter tries to spin you're golden pretty golden all right now we're going to turn it over and get on to the underside of it here real quick and there's something loose inside that is clanking around we need to figure out what that is all right we got the bottom off let's take a look all right we got the bottom off let's take a look this is in all its glory it's nudity it's undressing it's romantic all right, this is what was floating around inside, some kind of plastic. It's tinted the same color as the exterior. All the interior is white, so don't know where it's from. I might figure that out the hard way. <laughs> All right, so uh, the board here, this circuit board, is to control the optic uh, so that it can find the groove in the record, as well as uh, there is some sound technology in here to reduce the amount of pops and clicks that you hear in the record, kind of like that. And while I was under here, I found this. I This was actually covered and I was like, well, that, that looks suspicious. It's a UL listed sticker that's been well worn, but there was circuitry sitting right here. So I was, I was like, well, that's suspicious because it's wired up. It looks like it's functional and uh, it's a synchro record. So uh, on select uh, techniques decks, there was a cord that could jump between this and the cassette recorder. And when this would kick off, it would start the cassette recorder. Pretty cool, right? Uh, there's an adjustment hole right here, but the same adjustment is uh, from above as well. So you pop this little doohickey out right here and I'm not gonna break my fingernail trying to do it, but essentially it's the drop position. Uh, you can move the drop position of the needle in and out um, ever so slightly with that. Um, pretty cool. And uh, that's about it. That's all That's all she wrote. That's all that's there. And I uh, found my piece. Now I'm putting it back together.